objection handling framework. So there's really four different types of objections. There's a money objection, price is too low. There's a time objection, which we don't get a lot as investors. Um, but yeah, you know, this all sounds good. I like the price, but I'm going to do this a little bit later. It does come up, right? There's a value objection, which means you've done your job terribly, which means, uh, so they say like, I don't see the value in this. I don't see how this can help me, right? If you're gone all the way through your presentation and they don't see how this could help you, there's something missing there, right? And then there's a partner objection. Um, yeah, I got to go talk to my wife. I got to go talk to my spouse. Think about it is not an objection. If you guys think, think about, think about it as a smoke screen. Nobody just goes home and just closes their eyes and just like thinks about it, right? They either, they either need more information or there's just something that they're not telling you, right? So our objection handling framework is this. The first thing we're going to do is acknowledge and then disarm. So let's say that we get a, um, you know, let's say we get a price objection. You know, I, I certainly understand that. I'll give you this example. <laughs> yeah, everything sounds good. I just, I can't, I can't take that, that much of a loss for the house. Yeah, you know, that's not a problem. I certainly understand that you would want more money for the property. I guess other than the money though, is there anything else that you would like to see? So that way you can, you know, get out of this XYZ property and get to that XYZ property that you really wanted to. If they say no, that's a price objection, right? So the first thing we need to do is acknowledge what type of objection it is. If they say no, it's just the money, right? So, okay, let's say, I mean, so let's say that, you know, we were able to get you more money. I mean, we still were able to do everything else in the time frame. I mean, would you do it then? Well, yeah, I would do it then. A and why though? Well, whatever they say after that. Well, because if, you know, if I could get some more money and you guys could still do it in 30 days, I wouldn't have to stress about, uh, you know, finding a buyer and then we could just smoothly move into our next property, right? So this is a price objection. Then we're going to ask a weighted question, something along the lines of this. Well, I mean, what do you feel like is, is riskier at this point? Is it spending the next three, six months chasing the absolute top dollar for the property? Or is it knowing that this is taken care of for you? So that way you can, you know, get to your property in the next 30 days and not have to worry about, you know, losing the next one. That would be just an example, right? We're going to, first thing that we need to do is we need to acknowledge, then we need to disarm them. So if we say, well, what do you mean it's too much? It's not enough money. How much do you need? Right. That is going to that is going to do the opposite of what we want. That's going to raise their sales resistance. So we need to acknowledge. Yeah. You know, I can I completely understand. That's certainly not a problem. I would probably think the same thing if I were in your shoes. So now we've disarmed them. Then we're going to clarify. Right. And, it, and when you say it's not enough money, can you can you walk me through how much you actually need? Right? I need X, Y, Z more. Then we're going to put the objection aside, whatever objection it is. Let's say it's a partner objection. Let's say, you know, your partner says, yes, would you do it? Right. Let's say that we were able to get you enough money. Other than that, would you do it? They're going to say yes or no. If they say no, then another objection is going to come up. We go over this exact process again. If they say yes, that they're, you know, they would do it. We want to ask them why, right? Whatever their why is, that's why they want to work with us. Right. So that's the thing. What's more important to them? Right. Is it the, the why of why they want to work with us? Or is it the objection that they're getting, that they're giving themselves really? And this is just an example, right? What do you feel like is riskier? Um, I get, and there's a, I have a ton of examples. I just can't go over all of them in, in one hour. Um, but I have a whole book of objections that I can send you guys for partner objection, money, time, value, all of them. Um, now, if you don't take away anything from this presentation other than this, these are simple concepts that will double your sales. So number one, the most common mistake that salespeople make is they don't listen. If you just listen more, you will double your sales just by listening more. Don't think about what you're going to say. Don't read your script. Just listen, right? So number one is listen. Number two is actually try to help. So when you are listening, figure out how you can help first. Don't get commission breath. Don't just think about the number signs, the dollar signs on the deal, right? Think about how you can actually help them. Number three is using neutral language. So stop saying, you know, uh, hey, we're going to give you a cash offer or investment opportunity. Use more neutral language. Try saying options, possibly. You were possibly looking to sell. And then what we want to stay away from 
is we want to stay away from speaking from a low status. So when you call people and you say, hey, Bob, how you doing? It's just X, Y, Z. How are you today? Oh, cool. Did you did you catch the football game last night? All that does is it lowers your status. They look at you as a lowly salesperson that just wants to be liked, right? Think about if you're, uh, I don't know, for the for the guys on here, you're asking somebody out for a date. You're not gonna be like, hey, can you please go out with me, right? That's gonna lower your status, right? You wanna think about speaking from a high status. Um, selling to the wrong people, obviously if, like, some people aren't gonna be you know, our prospects, right? They're not gonna be the, the sellers that, that we can actually help acknowledge that when that's the case and move on, right? That might be 30, 40% of our, of our sellers, um, 30, 40%, 50% are going to be the people that we can actually help. And a lot of people are not closing 30, 40, 50%, right? And then avoid sounding like a salesperson. So don't think, don't say things like, Hey, I'm just following up with you, right? That's such a salesy phrase. People don't want to be followed up with. Um, don't say things like, Hey, if I did this, would that provide value to you? right? Like that's a salesy thing to say. People see through that, right? People have been, are used to being sold things now. And all it does is raise the resistance. So if you just do this, your sales will get much, much better. And most importantly, just listen. Don't sound like a salesperson.